To discuss this in greater detail, we are now joined by Abneesh <coughs> Roy, Executive Director, Institutional Equities at Edelweiss Securities on the show now. Abneesh, morning. It's a pleasure having you here with us. Before we get chatting about the Z Disney deal, wanted to get your thoughts in on the CCI overhang. Um, do you think it'll be a big concern? Will it you know, bring about big hurdles in the Z Sony deal? Explain it to us. Sure. Thanks. Uh, yes. Uh, one positive news, one negative news. Uh, clearly, positive news will be more on a 18 months to four years perspective, while the negative news is uh, more near term. So yes, on the CCI, there are three key things. Uh, one is, as of now, it doesn't seem to be a big overhang. It is slight overhang. Uh, investors are currently grappling on two, three issues. Where How much does this delay the process? And is there any channel reduction which the merged entity will have to do? Uh, if we see the numbers of market share, which uh, Mangalam also highlighted, currently, if you see, there is a competition from Amazon, Netflix for the uh, TV channels. So when you just see a TV market share, you're ignoring the OTT market share also because customer obviously now has moved on. In the last two years, customer uh, has moved on. There's huge disruption. Coming back to TV channel market share, if you see the numbers, clearly the merged entity has lost market share. And this is a dynamic uh, world, right? Uh, market shares are going to be dynamic. But if you see uh, in each of the four genres, which CCI seems to have mentioned, the market share of non-Z, non-Sony is at least 63 to 73%. Apart from this, NTO2 still is a big overhang on subscription. So my sense is bargaining power doesn't really increase too much. But yes, investors will be concerned on time and whether the number of channels, any change would uh, need to be uh, there. But yes, H2, we do expect uh, the advertising revenue to come back, which is a positive for Z and all TV channels. One last point is essentially on the time. If you see NCLT approval will take further seven months. So CCI is happening in parallel. And my sense is seven months is a long time for CCI and Z Sony to sit together and see how the data is and to address the questions which CCI has. Yes. All right, got it. So it's not necessarily, of course, that, uh, you know, there will be any delay on account of just the CCI investigations and the concerns. But uh, Avnish, thanks for joining us. This is Pavitra. You know, you've mentioned in your note that uh, the CCI may propose a slight change to some genres in which the market share is high. How do you expect this will play out, if, you know, in case they do go ahead and propose this? Yeah, so if you see, uh, CCI seems to have pointed out four genres, Hindi, GEC, Hindi films, and two regional, uh, Bengali and Marathi. If I see what had happened in PBR's acquisition in multiplex DLF cinemas, they had told PBR to let go some of the screens in some of the micro markets where there was a high market share. So here also, there could be one option for CCI to see that in these few genres, how is the market share? Should I look at only TV market share? Because customer now obviously has moved on to OTT in a very big way. And there is Netflix, Amazon Prime and whatnot. So I would say, yes, the one possibility could be, one scenario could be that some of these genres, uh, the CCI may propose something. But this is completely in the realm of CCI. So very difficult to second guess. But that's one possibility which I would not completely rule out. Mm. Uh, Abneesh, just one question on this issue before we move on. Do you not think Z should have disclosed it to the shareholders because the competition watchdog's letter, CCI's letter came out on 3rd of August and now, you know, it's come to light only on 31st of August. If CCI had raised some concerns, would it not have been better corporate governance for Z to disclose it to the shareholders before this? So if you see, this is a uh, discussion between CCI and Z Sony. And if you see this kind of a merger between two large players uh, to expect that CCI will not ask anything, I think that doesn't work uh, that way. So this is part of the procedure, I would say. And obviously there is sensitivity in terms of data, how you interact. There is a regulator, there is two merged entity, there's one entity which is unlisted. So I would say that this is quite routine that CCI will ask uh, questions on the past data, but the data which CCI is referring is to FI21. So the, uh, the world has changed in terms of say OTT because of the COVID also, and clearly Z has lost market share. So I would say that yes, in that context, I don't think there is any concern because you don't want to give a data which is very premature, right? Uh, as I said, in CCI, these kind of queries will happen in these kind of large mergers. 
All right, uh, let's now move on and talk about the good news which came through, which is the ICC media rights that they have won. So take us through how you look at this and how much of an upside do you see on account of this news that came through? Of course, um, they now have a big chunk of the cricket rights. Yes, sir. So if uh, the CCI thing wouldn't have come, hopefully Z should have been in uh, better uh, stock performance today. But yes, coming back to so this deal, it was very surprising, right? Two rivals who are fiercely competing for the last 20 years, uh, trying to work with each other in a small way. Uh, why has uh, Star done this? They are trying to reduce their concentration risk in one country, India, and trying, in that market, they are trying to reduce concentration risk on TV because IPL rights are with uh, uh, Star and similarly digital rights of IPL are with Viacom. So uh, Star is trying to reduce its concentration risk, uh, especially given the way macro is, especially given the way overall disruption in terms of consumption habits are saying, uh, changing. I think it makes a lot of sense. Uh, for uh, Z, clearly, it will uh, address the missing gap in their portfolio. My sense is when you deal with uh, BCCI, then the rights are very expensive. You have seen that in IPL, for example. But here, Star is entering into a sub-licensing with Z. So I think for Z, this will be a much more better deal. Strategically, huge sense. The staggered payment as Mangalam highlighted over a four years. So when the event happens, then you have to pay. And because these are World Cup kind of events, I think in terms of viewership, this will definitely help Z when these uh, 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 events happen. So net net, yes, it's good. Last point is uh, star sub-licensing TV rights. Does it mean that they are negative on TV? No, not really, because they bid for the IPL TV rights, right? So it is just a case of reducing the concentration risk in the portfolio. Got it. Uh, and how would you map uh, the impact on the PNL, both in terms of the benefits, revenues, advertisements, etc., and the possible costs over the next four years? See, very difficult to say because we have just one number, three billion dollar star bid uh, for these ICC, but that includes the digital TV and the women's properties also. So we don't have a breakup, so that's a uh, that's a challenge. But uh, if I see, definitely this starts in FY24. So this is very early to really start building in numbers also. Also, we need to get a formal approval from ICCI, which seems to be more of in principle. But I would say that this will not be a big negative impact because that's a concern everyone has on TV rights when BCCI is involved. But this is not between BCCI and Z. This is between Star and uh, Z and Star is trying to reduce. So I would say that, yes, from a revenue and cost, uh, difficult to give a number, but it is definitely positive for Z from a strategy. But these are four or five properties over a four year time frame. So I would say the impact is more of a strategic rather than any big impact on the EBITDA level. Of course, the margins will be lower. So we'll see some compression on margins for Z when these things happen. But on a full year number and hopefully if it's a merged entity, then the impact will be low. All right, Abneesh, then finally, call on the stock. So we have a buy on uh, Z. Of course, uh, these issues are happening. There's a huge delay already in terms of exchange approval. But in terms of triggers, what we see is in H2 because commodity costs have corrected. FMCG companies, auto companies will come back in terms of advertising, a lot of the other discretionary. Also, NTO2, there will be more clarity in the second half. Uh, so these are the two triggers. The valuation is quite comfortable, but my sense is near term overhang will remain till the CCI issue gets addressed. The NCLT approval comes. There is a near term definitely question mark, uh, which we still are uh, grappling with. All right, Avnish, got it. Thank you very much for joining us. Like you said, there's perhaps a near term hurdle with the CCI raising some concerns. But of course, the ICC rise that we were talking about is quite a positive for the company. With that, we're going to get into a short break on the show. But up. Uh,